Attention. 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 Anyone who struggles with how to live the dream life they deserve. How to live the dream life they deserve. You're tuning in to the Ready, Set, Live podcast. The Ready, Set, Live podcast. A show that motivates you, motivates you to fulfill your highest potential. Your highest potential. By igniting your passion and discovering your purpose. You too can live a life of design instead of a life by default. And now, your host, author, author, speaker, speaker, and and entrepreneur, and entrepreneur, Captain Rex Whitcamp. What is up, everyone? It's Rex Whitcamp, and you are listening to the latest episode of the Ready, Set, Live podcast. I always make sure to have the most interesting, most passionate individuals on my show, and I have a conversation that promotes people to live a life of design instead of a life by default. We do this by promoting you to take action that leads to new ways of discovering discovering your true mission, your purpose, and achieving your goals in life, any goals. And if you find value in this podcast, I would love for you to leave a review on your podcast app. It only takes a couple of minutes, but it has a massive impact on the rest of us. Thank you. Also, share this podcast with your other family members or your friends. Your life is on the rise, so it only makes sense that you share this journey with like-minded people. And don't forget, the more that you talk about these topics with other people, the more you will understand them and they will become part of your everyday perspective and life. And now, let's get started. All right, Candice, thank you so much for joining us today on the Ready, Set, Live podcast. I'm so excited to have you on today, and I know you're super busy, so thank you for giving us your time. For my oh, I'm thrilled I, to be here. These I, are my favorite things to talk about. Let's I, jump in. I tell you, the universe has just aligned for us to have this time to be able to share some of these topics with everyone listening. And um, if you're listening to this podcast today, please recycle it through your network of people. This is inspirational content. It's going to help not only you, but people that you know. So reach out and reach back and tell Tell your friends about this and families. So, Candace, tell us tell us a little bit about yourself. From um, you know where you started, where you're at now, where you live, what part of the country you hail from, and, and a little bit about your projects, what you're involved in through uh, organizations. Yes, thank you. First of all, I'm super stoked to be your guest. So, thank you for having me. Um, I am from Prescott, Arizona. Uh, currently, I am born and raised a native of Los Angeles. Um, I've lived out here for about six, six, seven years, and I absolutely love it. I have never looked back. I love small town living. It makes me very happy. <laughs> I would also say, if I'm going to, you know, um, kind of make a summary of me and who I am, I am a manifester. I am someone who I can tell you, throughout my whole life journey, if I have thought it wanted it, hoped for it. Um, I've just said it out loud and put a whole ton of work behind making it happen. (laughs) So everything that I do here and everything that I've done in my career previously has been um, with always a dream and a goal in mind. It's never been a fluke. It's never been flippant. It's never been off the cuff. Not to say, I I always tend to tell friends of mine, I'm like, there is so much spontaneity within structure. And I think structure is really just a bunch of good habits lining up, (laughs) you know, if you're setting, if you're setting yourself up for success by good habits, you're bound to have good results. And maybe sometimes for those that push back on those ideas, yes, sometimes they may not be the results you hoped for, but I guarantee you they are 10 steps further from where you were. What an amazing uh, attitude towards not just (laughs) career, but towards life, right? I mean, and so, you know, your bio here is, is so just packed with achievement. Tell us a little bit about what you're uh, involved with in your local community. Because you said you made the move to a small town um, yes. and, and coming from you know California. Tell, tell us about what you did to, to ingrain your efforts and your mentality moving forwards with the projects that you're involved with locally. Sure. If, if we have the time, there's one um, pre-fact I would like to share because sure. people often see my resume and what I'm doing and my production company and those things and and sum me up as a goal-oriented person, which I am. Um, When I moved out here, I think it's important that people know that I spent two years not singing. I spent two years crying every time I sat down at a piano and I spent two years wondering what, am I allowed to curse? What in the mother loving heck am I gonna do now? Um, 
I had come from a background of being a professional performer, traveling and touring all over the country and world. I've sung with major A-list artists. I've recorded with them. I have had my own successes with my own songs. Um, and I moved to a small town where at that same crossroad, I was pregnant with a child and I my band had dissolved. And I really was at a place where I, I honestly didn't totally know what to do next. And I say all of that just to encourage anybody who feels like they're at a crossroad and they go, well, it's so easy for you to say, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Everybody, everybody comes to this crossroad at some point of their life. And the answer is, how do you choose to work with that? And my answer was to sit on my hands for two years because the reality was I, I was manif I was working out what the vision would be. And sometimes when you don't know, the best thing you can do is say, I don't know. And I'm going to continue to think and I'm going to continue to be positive and I'm going to continue to say there's more for me in doing so that small step of just saying, you know, there's more for me you are going to put one foot in front of the other and another day is going to go by and another day is going to go by and then another day will come and you'll go you know what wow this community is really beautiful there are so many incredible musicians here i happen to have a resume that comes padded and loaded with a bunch of connections and wonderful relationships that would allow me to create something here that would help those musicians have you know, bigger outlets or, yeah. or even just bigger audiences, even at home, you know, create an, an excitement, a buzz. And that's a skill set that I have been trained to know how to do through my life's work. So for two years, thinking and thinking and thinking, and I did have the very good fortune of, of having a partner and a husband who at the time was paying our bills. We've, we've also reversed that. I, I tend to talk in terms of like, this way my brain works is that I always know what the pushback is because you ha we have these with ourselves, right? You know? Um, and so, yeah, for two years, I did not work. I raised a child and that was a choice my husband and I made, but I would also encourage everybody to know that there have been plenty of years in my life where I had three jobs to make the same singular dream happen. Sure, and that's sure. important. Um, anyway, the creative thought process was, I believe this city could be a music city. I really see it. There are tons of musicians here. There are brilliant musicians here. Why, why when I was on tour, did I not know to stop in Prescott and play a show? Why right. didn't I not know about this incredible place? There's a problem there. Okay, we found the problem. The problem is this place is housing brilliance. No one knows about it. Okay, I can identify a problem. That gives me a stepping stone to the next step. I open my mouth and start talking with everybody from Los Angeles and New York and Nashville. Have you guys ever been to Prescott? Did you ever tour through Prescott? Did you know Prescott is a music city? Wait, yeah. excuse me, what? You moved to a music city? I did move to a music city. Yeah. You should come play a show here. Okay, well, I'm gonna be in Phoenix. We're only an hour and a half north of Phoenix. Why don't you play your show in Phoenix and then add an extra stop and come play a show in Prescott? I'll help you set it up. So before I even started on my own journey with what I would do in Prescott, I started with just making what my view of Prescott to be known. And what I could do was do what we all do very well, which is have some hospitality. That's an easy thing. It doesn't cost you anything. Yeah. It doesn't take any time to be hospitable. And when I started inviting people to come to Prescott, one by one, they came, whether it was just to visit me or to play a show. And they also were like, wow, this is a great music city. So then my motivation was like, okay, I've gotten confirmation from other people that are traveling, touring musicians. They also think it's an awesome music city. I need to be louder in my community. I need to talk these words out loud. I need to share my vision out loud. And at some point, like will find like. Magnets attract. Yeah, if, yeah. If there's someone else who, who thinks and sees what I see, now I've got power because now there's two heads that see it. And that is exactly what happened. I started talking to various people in the community. Wouldn't it be great if we could do this? Wouldn't it be great if we had more of that? Wouldn't it be amazing if touring acts from all over the country used us as a stop? Wow, Candace, that's a great idea. Well, thank you. I think so too, you and other person. Now there's two of us going, wouldn't it be great if that done? And a third person went, wow, Candace, that's a great idea. And then one day um, I had the ear of somebody who also had the financial backing to support that vision, who was in line with that vision. And now we're going on probably a year, almost two years of that financial support in making that vision truly become a reality. 
um, it all manifesting. I tell people all the time, I'm a professional manifester. It's important That's to be it. clear on the thoughts. You know what's incredible that what you just said that I mean you said a lot there. It's a little little bit a lot to unpack, but I, there's Sorry. a couple <laughs> of points there. <laughs> a couple of points there is that you know not just you are a manifester. Everybody's a manifester, and you may be Absolutely. considering yourself as a manifester of the positive realm to affect change and influence others and bring these ideas and opportunities to your local community. But people that don't succeed, people that are stuck in life, people that can't seem to find a way out they are also professional manifestors. And it's important Absolutely. to know for people to understand that if you feel stuck, it may be some of the words you are saying, some of the thoughts that you're thinking, and that could be hindering you and hampering, um, hindering your efforts to move forward with some of those accomplishments in your life. So let me take you back here a little bit from when you said um, that uh, in, in Prescott and, and these opportunities, um, you know, where you said it's important to make a distinction, right? And for two years, you you did nothing. But obviously, you're doing so much now. There had to be a turning point. There had to be a time. What, Absolutely. what take us to that central time of what was it an event? Was it a, a, a certain time? A, a, what like walk us through that chan transition? I'm so glad you asked that question. And the reason I started with I sat around for two years and did nothing. Um, when I say I did nothing, I did nothing to change my course is what I meant by that. Okay. So I did not go like, for example, in that two years, I got my real estate license. I got on the board of an equestrian community, you know, of thing. I did other things. Uh -huh. But never in my mind did I did I allow myself to go, oh, the dream is over now. You're not a performer anymore. You okay. moved to a ranch out in the desert, so now you have to be a different person. When I say I did nothing, I just wasn't sure what, and that's why I started there, because for exactly the people you were talking to, people who feel stuck, yeah. sometimes I believe it's important to allow yourself to go, yes, I'm stuck right now. Okay nothing's finite this is temporary everything is temporary right. so when you are stuck the most important thing you can do is still be active in your life in some way so to answer your question the turning point was i did i got on i got involved in a there was a, a community effort to create an equestrian center for kids to be able to ride their horses safely and we live in a very big farm community lots of animals mm -hmm. um and I had come from a big background of horses. And I was like, again, here's an area I can give knowledge where I can be a useful person to something greater than myself. Yeah. That was the moment that I went, how do we get things going in a town? It takes money. How can I make money? A benefit concert. There you go. <laughs> Bright idea. Guess what I do? Yeah. I sing. Suddenly in a day, because I found other purpose, other places, while I was figuring out what my path was going to unfold like yeah. being that I had been a professional singer my whole adult career. Um, I found other ways to keep myself busy while I was working through the thoughts. And that's why I say clear thoughts are important. I wasn't ready to quit being a singer or a performer or an entrepreneur or anything of that nature. I just didn't know how to move forward. So I was stuck. This outlet gave me a reason to sing. I had did a big sold out concert. We made them thousands of dollars. It helped the cause and immediately reopened the door to my career in a new city. I, I think that's that's so wonderful. And thank you for sharing that. And I know that people that are listening to this are gonna connect with your story. And uh, I'm gonna make a mention here that at the end of this, I'm gonna you know recycle all the footage through all of my uh, channels, but I'm gonna put more importantly, the links to where to find you, but we'll get to that a little bit later. But I want to take you through a, a quick five-step process that I call the five tenets. And this rings true through a lot of what you're talking about. And, and this helps people get from a, a place in their life where they're stuck to actually doing something with that fulfills their potential. And for you, that came, the switch came from the understanding that there's a greater cause. There's a, a, a service to be done and it's to help other people. So you are sitting on massive amounts of talent and a huge resume in the industry. And it wasn't until you said, you know what? So I can help somebody else and, and giving is so much more better than receiving. So you decided to open your heart and you gave to your community. And then all of a sudden, anything that you needed as far as industry contacts and and um, financial backing and, and all of that came, it, you attracted it. So that's the universal law of attraction that people understanding this will don't 
Don't go chase success. It will always, anything you chase will always elude you, but you attract success. Whatever you want to manifest in your life, you visualize it, you manifest it, you vocalize it, you believe it, and you say it, and you recite it every day. You start living with a heart of gratitude and this stuff that you want in life that anybody wants. This is a formula anybody can use. I've just used it in my life as well, and so have you. But countless other people have proven that if you attract success, it's much easier attainable than if you go and chase it. So you decided to serve others, and that's where it reversed on you and started to help you. So going back to the five tenets, okay, quickly. Rising above mediocrity is so important. There's mediocrity everywhere. We got to rise above it. And then once we do that, we elevate our standards. Once we elevate our standards, we set a new benchmark for ourselves, and then we have to start visualizing. We've talked about visualizing already a little bit. How can we be the, the visualize the best versions of ourselves? Not just what I am, but what, what could I be? You know, and I love the quote that is, don't just look at a man for what he is because he only gets worse. But if you look at a man or a woman for what they could be, they become what they should be. So you always see the potential and it's important to look in the mirror and for people to understand there's a better version of myself. I just have to visualize it. I want to visualize it first and visualization is so underutilized. 15 minutes of visualization is more effective than 16 hours of hard labor and people don't understand the power if of what I they may, can do. And I'm sorry to interrupt you, Rex, but it's, okay. it's just worth noting. If I may, I, and, and I, it wasn't until you said it at that moment. I, I visualize every night before bed and every morning when I wake up. And, and it's, it's, <laughs> it's an intuitive thing for yeah. me. It's something I've done since I was a kid. I don't, I don't know where, if my parents ever imparted that on me or what, but I mm -hmm. will tell you that I can look you in the eye and say every night before bed, my last thoughts are visualizing where I see whatever I'm working on or whatever yeah. I'm doing, whether it's for my child or for my family or for my career, or it is, it is kind of like my nightly prayer and my morning ritual. I mean, it just is something that I cannot stress enough to anybody listening. That's incredible. If you can't see it for yourself. How yeah. will anyone else? Yeah, exactly. You have to see it for yourself and you have to see it and believe it before anybody else will see it or believe it. And it's not, you know, a lot of people say, I'll believe it when I see it, but that's the wrong approach. You have to believe it first and then you will see it. Well, and that comes into an additional section is faith. And it's not religious faith. It's faith in, in knowing what you're capable of. If you have faith in your own capability, anything you visualize should be possible. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, like I said, thank you for sharing that. I know this is going to ring true with somebody driving down the road to a job where they feel unfulfilled. And did you know, did you know that human beings are the only species on the planet that have a predictable heart, uh, a failure, a heart failure, predictable heart attacks occur Monday mornings between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. And it's because people are upset. Yeah. Most first, I did time, not know that. most first time myocardial infarctions, which are heart attacks, occur to people on Monday mornings between the hours of 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. because they're going to a job that they don't like and they have no purpose fulfilling their own potential. There's no passion. There's no joy. There's no, uh, you know, oh, this person, they, they don't work a day in their life because they love, they, 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 they love what they love do. What they do they right? work. Why do you think they do that? <laughs> it's because it's simple. They believe into the equation at the most basic level. They're doing what they love because that's the only thing to do. People with a passion, they don't wake, they don't need an alarm clock. They just wake up and be. They, they are who they are. They don't need any funding. They don't need any networks. They don't need any training or college education. I mean, you have, you have 12 year old YouTubers making $10 million a year and they love to do that. And they're yeah. getting well funded by the internet for that. I know. You know, you have people that travel the world on their laptop making incomes, God amount awfully yearly incomes for some people in a month and doing that from wherever they want in the world. You know, you have professional Instagram models. You have, totally. you know, people that, that dig in and just love to do, you know, other things, whether they're, they're, they're talented in the music industry, like our friend Leland. He does a lot of stuff out in the music industry, but not just what he's talented at. He does things in the industry of, uh, as a he whole. referees, yeah. Exactly, so. Because he loves it. I would say this too, just to add to your point, is that I was having this conversation with somebody today um That's there's also something to be yeah there's also something to be said for no matter what you're doing it is okay it is a thousand percent okay to say i hate my job 
but it is not a thousand percent okay to allow yourself to be a lesser version of yourself because you hate your job. People deserve so, more than that. They deserve right. more. So of like, for example, when I was waiting tables, cause that every singer under the sun has waited tables. <laughs> I, it was so easy to be like, F this job and this corporate, whatever, you know, yeah. you know, thing I have to wear and this and that the experience that someone got at the table was not with the corporate restaurant. It was with me. Yeah. I never loved being a waitress, but I love people and I love communicating with people and I love sharing an experience with people, even strangers. So as much as I could give the bird to the establishment I was working for, it is important that you never allow yourself, because I do think this is a big feeding factor to depression and other things, is that when people feel like, I hate going there, I'm so uninspired, they then allow themselves to become negative. They allow themselves yeah. to forget that their version of themselves is actually what is gonna make the day better. Absolutely. Right. If, if you're the IT practice. guy and you're and you're being the good guy on the phone and you've got the person that's screaming at you and you're like, if you're willing to say, listen, I'm here with you, I get it. This yeah. blows. But you know what I am going to do? I'm going to help turn this around for you because I also hate this company and I also hate that the, your <laughs> computer is taking a shit. And I also hate all these things that you hate, yeah. but we're going to do it together and yeah. it's going to suck less. That's right. Guess what? You made your day better and you made someone else's day better. That's right. That's right. Collect Collaboration is the new form of winning and rookies, <laughs> rookies will compete, but yeah. winners and high achievers, they collaborate. So I am more than willing to take anybody and say, I believe in you. I know what you're capable of, even, you, the, even though you may not understand what you have in your future to be able to, what you're possibly can do for yourself, but I believe in you and I can see it in you. And sometimes people just need that motivation. They need that totally. inspiration. They need somebody to believe in them the way nobody else has ever believed in them. And I like to be the person that people, that I want that I want to meet, you know what I mean? I met this interesting person today and it's like, I want to be that guy that, that people go, man, I, I, know, I never saw him again, but there was this one guy I met and he was full of inspiration and motivation. He got me to you know take action on my life and he, he made a real difference. And I, I'm using the power of my voice through what you know, my history was to be able to go through some challenges in my my world to be able to get to a point to instill motivation in people to take action because people live like they have a thousand years to live. We're, <laughs> we're here today. Um, is today, today the day I tell you that that's not the case? Is that the <laughs> when are you going to admit that you don't live forever? You know, you only have a certain amount of time to t complete your mission, and I believe we all have a mission to complete in our life. So it's utmost important, not only for your sake. But for the rest of us out here, we're shortchanged if you don't do something with your potential. If you don't allow the world to understand what the value is that you bring, you're you're giving it to the, the soil, the graveyard. You're dying with it and nobody can benefit from it. And we should be, it's been said by Horace Mann that we should be afraid to die until we have given some major achievement back to humanity. And everybody that. can do that. Everybody can do that. Every single person can do that. And that's much to my point too, is that it's like, you can you can be distraught with the, the situation and the scenario. You have full control over who you are and, and how much you unleash of your own potential. And you can apply it to any circumstance. You can, it's a choice you can make. And I'm so thankful for people like you, Rex, that are giving that you know unconditional support and belief and love into other people. It's important. But then I ask that those other people that go, oh, I met this one guy that one time, yeah. also take note and go, I have that power too. And Everybody have the self-accountability to say, yeah. I have a choice to contribute my, my positivity or my gift. And even if I'm not positive today, I got news for you. I've had a really rough day today. But oh, I could sit here and tell you all about that, or I could sit here and go, tomorrow's going to be better. Yeah, it will be better, you know? And it will. And the only day that was hard was yesterday, or easy was yesterday. And maybe tomorrow's going to be harder. But, right. you know, it's not what you go through. It's what you grow through. People don't understand this in life. I look for the failures, and I run after the failures to get through the failures. Nobody's perfect. There's no such thing as perfection. You know, practice makes what, right? People say perfection. But perfection is an un, unreachable, unattainable uh, no, goal. Practice just makes better. It just practice, makes better and better and makes, better. It just makes improvement. So if today was yeah. a hard day, learn from it and, and grow through it. And then tomorrow, you won't make those mistakes again. You know? Oh, they weren't my learn mistakes. From them. No, I'm just kidding. Well, I'm, just kidding. Yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. So, um, so, 
you know, really my funny. outlook on it is will be better tomorrow. You it, know what I mean? Really like, because not... what I have taken away from the day was, okay, that didn't work and that didn't work. I could do this and be really upset and do blah, 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 blah. Or I can go, I can avoid this next time by being yeah. prepared for blah, blah, blah and learn from it. A wise mentor once told me that you can get bitter or you can get better. And it's not what you go through, it's what you grow through. And you know, life has challenges. It's the cycle of life. It's gonna have its ups, it's gonna have its downs. You know, when you visualize what you can do in your life and what you're capable, have a little self-confidence, eat a little, you know, better nutritional uh, um, palate for what you grow uh, at the grocery store and the foods you eat and the, and the uh, nourishment you ingest, the physical activity you do, your mental health, the things that you listen to on um, the through the radio or through the airwaves, such as this podcast. Everybody's mind is programmed to deal with uh, the outside influences ready or not i mean you either prepare yourself or you don't fortify your your mental being and your and yourself because this all goes back to COVID. did a lot for a lot of people it ruined a lot of people mentally there's a lot of mental issues going on because of the suicide rate because of the um, divorce rate because of this child abuse rate because of so many jobs that were lost and mortgages and so much depression but you know what the bright side of the coin is there's people that had the same exact formula given to them and they've made millions of dollars. They've hired, they've opened new businesses, they've done things with their lives, but how is it? And it's all mental programming that, that led to that. Yeah. I have said think? this to, to multiple friends for multiple reasons many times. If everything, if everything, if you can visualize everything you have was taken away from you across the globe, every single person got re started over at zero, uh -huh. you would still, you can take, billionaires you can take every everybody got wiped down to zero oprah too there are still going to be people who go i have nothing and i will make something and mm -hmm. they will evolve and grow and and there will still be people that go that are envious and bitter and jealous that this person created this that or the other when the truth of the matter is everybody has that power at zero it's and it's the same 24 hours in a day that everybody has and that's why Everybody. it's so important for people to find their mission in life, to fulfill that purpose, ultimately achieve their true potential, their, their real potential of what they're capable of, and just be happy and fulfilled by living their passion, such as like what you're doing. You know, you made that change, you started to reach out. Um, talk to us a little bit about, you know, you're living your highest potential, you know, and, and you are living your true purpose. So how does that feel? Talk to us about what happens inside when you know that what you're doing is aligning with what it is you're meant to do. Well, I think when you're living in what I'll, I'll dub as when you're living in your truth or your potential or when you're living in your capabilities and when you are going toward a goal that feels authentically correct to who you are, the thing that happens is the goalpost moves. That's what oh, yeah. happens. The goalpost <laughs> yeah. moves. Yeah. It, so there's no like, oh, I did it. It's, I got to here. Now, what more can I do? Because yeah. the reality is, is that when you're living in a, in a higher vibration, or at least with intention, I would say, you know, you're living at a place where why stop there becomes the motto, right? It, exactly. It's like, well, if I could, if I could make, you know, X, Y, Z happen, if I could really brew that, if I, if I could make that soup out of nothing, um, what's stopping me from going further? What's stopping me from, you know, whatever capability I think I'm, I, I'd want to dream up. Um, and so that's, that's what it is. I mean, it's like, you know, through COVID, I, we talked a little bit, I don't know if we were recording or not recording, but our little music city here, there is music in Prescott, Arizona, typically six of the seven nights a week and usually even seven of seven nights a week and all of those professional musicians were put out of work because everything was shut down so much like many people across the globe did i just facilitated online streaming but with the caveat that we were doing these performances so these people could continue to pay their bills and feed their children and live their lives and the whole community got behind it and this and these musicians continued to make some money which was really impressive when you do that and the months go on and Arizona Prescott is also Arizona's Christmas city. 
and we are known for being the spirit of Christmas in our state. Well, all of our Christmas festivities got shut down, but we had figured out we could do online capabilities. So my production company said, why don't we do the first annual Christmas City Special and bring Christmas into everybody's homes that, via amazing. the internet. Yeah. And we had three weeks to do it. And we put on an hour long Christmas special that 40,000 people turned tuned into in a day. Um, so now I sit and I go, well, if I can pull off keeping people fed and if I can pull off keeping Christmas, <laughs> you know, going, um, what, what shouldn't be the next, you know what I mean? Like you start asking yourself, where are the lines instead of there are no, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, well, let's, let's do it right every time. Now you're just fine tuning to go. I want to make sure it's of quality and it's not just thrown together so that the experience is better. And guess what? We can bring more people in now because we have more time because we've gotten one of these under our belts and we've done this now for a year. So now we can do, so now we have a children's show in the works and now we have the next Christmas city special in the works. Well, it sounds like one have, thing led to another. And but so just, that's where, that's oh. what, to your question, it's like when you, yeah. when you're living in that level and you're going, you know, what is yeah. it? The answer is the goalpost moves and you, you just do more. You actually brought us uh, through conversation there in the last tenant, which as I mentioned, just to recap, we rise above, we start with rising above mediocrity. There's mediocrity everywhere. You have to make the decision to rise above that. Okay. And then once you do that, you, you know, there's a, a difference from here to there. Well, you can look down at mediocrity and go, okay, now I'm going to elevate my standards because I'm on a ladder here. I'm going up in life and you're on the rise and people's life are on the rise. And if you're listening to this broadcast, I got to assure you things are what they are now in your life. They're not what they could be and they, they're not going to stay forever. And if it's a challenge you're going through, you're going to get through this. It's come to pass. It's not come to stay. So by elevating your standards, you start visualizing the best version of yourself. We talked about that. And then we talked about, you know, what it feels like to live up to your highest potential. And just now you brought us into the last part of it, which is giving purpose for your potential. So you had a massive potential. You started to visualize, you were doing all these things, elevating your standards, rising above mediocrity. You then lived up to your highest potential by performing and doing all these different avenues of creative um, conver creative convergence, which is your podcast. A little mm -hmm. shameless plug there for you. Thank you. <laughs> and, and really what we're doing here is just giving purpose for your potential. And why is it important, Candice, why is it important for people to give purpose for what, what the, their potential is in life? Well, because I, I don't know anybody who does anything for nothing. I mean, you don't throw a ball for nothing. You don't, you don't, you know, I, it, it starts from the time we're infants. You don't, um, you don't cry for nothing. You cry for food. You cry to be changed. You don't, you know, act out in class for nothing. You do it for attention. You don't succeed for nothing. You succeed because you want to be the best at something. Mm -hmm. So anytime you set any kind of focus or goal, it, purpose behind it is what is going to give it breath exactly wings. you know you you gave uh, life to one of my favorite quotes here and if i can go way back all right and i'm not just mean last century this is one of confucius confucius mm. day right you ready for a confucius quote I'm ready the will to win and the desire to succeed the urge to reach your full potential these are the keys that will unlock the door to personal excellence and it's that everybody has that capability to achieve excellence in their lives. If they reach and they have an urge to fulfill their potential, which should align with their passion and it fulfills their purpose in life. And everybody has the will to win. Everybody has the desire to succeed. They may not admit it because they may not think that they can or that they're able to. And that's where the changing in mindset comes in because people can, anybody can achieve what they want. Well, and I think it's, it's important to distinguish too, because I think where most people, and I, I, I mean, I, I guess I'm assuming this, which I don't know if is safe, but I think where most people get hung up is on money because you think, oh, well, I love making pottery, but pottery is not going to pay this mortgage. Right. Yeah, yeah. And the reality is, is you haven't given it a shot, honestly. Yeah. And you've decided that it isn't of enough value to leave the job you don't like to pursue. Whereas yeah. like someone else might say, I'll keep the job I don't love while building the pottery so that when I make that transition, it's, yeah. it's all whens and while, I, when I will, how I will, and be, you know, because I will versus, oh, I couldn't, I wouldn't, it won't. Yeah. Yeah. It's thinking you know? in the positive. It's thinking in right. the positive. For anybody that's struggling to sell their gift of pottery, I want to remind you that there was an artist who duct taped a banana to the wall at an art exhibit and sold it for like a million dollars. So 
Well, and, and living in that truth. Your mind and, <laughs> yeah, and living yeah. in that truth and that honesty, money follows, right? Money is round anyway. So yeah. we can all point to millionaires. We can all point to someone who has more than we have, always. There is always going to be somebody who has more. So the point is to do the thing that fulfills you. Because if you're doing the thing that fulfills you, every you know the give and take spectrum of, of finance is going to be worth it. Right. You're going to go, oh, maybe I'm not making X yet. Yeah. Maybe I'm not making X yet, but I love what I do. I love how I'm doing it. I love the, you yeah. know, the schedule I create. I love my morning when I wake up, like you said. Um, I have a friend in that exact, she is actually a potter. She's a ceramicist and she okay. did leave Los Angeles and a whole bunch of stuff and just followed the wind of her passion. And now she runs a huge ceramics manufacturing custom design studio in Portland that ships all globally. It yeah. makes more money than she ever made before. She started at farmer's markets, you know, yeah. but she was willing to invest into herself and into the belief of having a fulfilled life of doing something she dreamed of doing, the money followed. Amazing. Um, you know, people treat success as it's an option in life. And that's really where they get stuck is that it's one of the major reasons why more people don't create this, this for themselves. And it's why most people don't even get close to living up to their, their full potential is they treat success as eh, it's a, maybe I get it, maybe I won't and probably won't happen. And, you know, a lot of it is just the shift in the mental process that that allows them to speak towards their goal. Um, people death and life is in the tongue and if whatever you speak you are able to create life to that being either you're creating an angel or you're creating a demon and if you speak life into your dream speak it into existence and it will your subconscious does not care whether you are a total flop failure in life or you're a humongous massive success if you tell yourself that you are already in that space of achievement and of skill and of notoriety or whatever benchmark you want to visualize you start feeling those feelings that is when the real magnetism happens towards attracting those things in life so i mean i'm really grateful for your time today candace um i'm going to keep this episode short and sweet now i'll tell you what i want to have you back on for another topic on another episode because these I, I could literally, uh, there's probably a time limit on my Zoom, but there's probably more and more and more that we can deep dive into. And I want to keep this short and sweet for somebody who's about to arrive at work and tune into the next show. Um, I want to uh, show your links here below, but if you would tell us, tell my audience here where to find you um, online. Sure. Um, to find me personally, everything everywhere is at Candace Divine. Uh, Candace Divine is spelled with two A's and Divine is spelled D-E, like elephant. Um, I am by no means divine, <laughs> like like the being uh, in a great being in the sky. Um, so if as long as you spell it correctly, you'll find me anywhere at Candace Divine. Um, my production company is called Further West, and uh, we are actually in the middle of a relaunch and all that stuff. So by the time you probably hear this or look, you, furtherwestmedia.com, uh, you can find us there. Um, trying to think, I, I mainly find me personally, and you'll find everything else. Thank you so much. I have Candace. a podcast. Yeah. The creative yeah. convergence. The I'm creative bad at plugging things. Podcast. <laughs> See, and I don't know what it is. Uh, people that achieve somehow, they just find a podcast and create a topic. And then they just, it, I mean, episodes are just happening all over the place um, yep. for all good reasons. So thanks again for your time today. Any last words you want to, to give our guests of some sort of inspirational content that you can like get them past the hump of what their challenge is today. Also, my, my last tidbit of, if for lack of a better word, advice would be is don't be afraid to look outside of the immediate um, physical plane you're working with. If you have dreams and you're like, gosh, I just can't afford the whatever here, have enough faith in yourself to go, oh, well, maybe if I lived in Idaho where my rent was you know, 15 times cheaper, I could do these things. Mm -hmm. Take a bet on yourself wherever it is, because sometimes being a small fish in a big pond allows you to come back to being a big fish in a big pond. Nicely and, um, said. Yeah. I, I think that that is one of the things that has gone untouched a long time. And that, that also needs to be looked at by a lot of people is that dreams come true in lots of places. And sometimes you have to be willing to risk and, and believe in yourself enough to take a leap to somewhere else where you can affordably because we want to be practical too, right? Like absolutely everything you just said is so legitimately huge and massive and important. 
But like I said, I always think about the people who are pushing back. Who's like, well, you don't have my apartment to pay for in New York. Yeah, well, I get that. <laughs> Maybe move to Jersey and start the dream. And then yeah. you'll realize when that dream yeah. is taken off, you now can afford the big apartment in New York and you can right. have both. Right. Um, so don't let yourself be limited by the circumference of what you can see. Um, just take a bet on yourself. And, and much to what Rex said, everything is completely doable when you're when you're living out loud breathing out loud speaking out loud but in positivity and um choosing your manifestations and you know energies and all that goodness well folks i hope you brought your pen and paper to take some notes on today's broadcast because <laughs> we're leaving you with some homework and you have a lot of work to do but you can get there and anybody can get there and candace thank you so much for your time today i want to double back and have another episode with you because you're just an incredible Anytime. guest so thank you so much and we'll catch you on the flip side thanks and have a great rest of your day you too rex it's been and a complete honor and joy anytime thanks bye That's it for today's show. And thanks for staying tuned up until the end. Can I ask you a big favor? Can you please leave a review? I know the podcast app is not super easy to navigate. So if you don't know how to leave a review, just DM me on Instagram at C-A-P-T dot Rex Whitcamp. And I will send you the direct link to the review section and show you my appreciation by answering any of your motivational questions or inspiration that you may ask me during that conversation. So thanks again. And remember, it's not who you are that holds you back from success. It's who you think you are not.